Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. This is your host ID Jester. So we got a couple new packages in the last couple days, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get a live unboxing here. This one, of course, is the Dark Valley, the East Front Campaign, 1941 to 1945 Deluxe Edition. It is by Ted Racer and produced by GMT Games. It is, as you can see, one of the thick three inch boxes here and uh, so what do we get inside well we're gonna get two 24 by 34 inch mountain maps with new map art and a bonus Barbarossa to Berlin map three sheets of thicker counters rule booklet to play booklet five player eight cards two six-sided dice this is a 14 age 14 and up uh, game and uh, each turn represents uh, a turn equals one to two months. Sorry, uh, counters are divisions, corps, and armies. One to two players, 20 miles per hex. Complexity is five out of nine medium, and solitaire is eight out of nine, very high. So uh, let's open the box and uh, take the shrink wrap off. Tony's Board Life and JTed. JTed. Thank you for your info on this game, by the way. Um, JTed was the one that let me know that if I ordered this, I would get the Barbarossa to Berlin map and the counters. So, uh, appreciate all your info on this. Let's take a uh, let's take a little gander. Take the shrink wrap off. I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, checking on our uh, video tonight. So the deluxe edition. Oh man, this is a heavy box. I've been saying that since I got it. It's too late and I should be asleep, mm -hmm. but there was a stream by Digesters. Wow, I appreciate you staying awake for me, at least for a few minutes. I appreciate that. So. Nice thick box. Uh, you can see it's not a flimsy box. Pretty thick. Nice. All right. So we'll just set that aside for right now. The Dark Valley. East Front Campaign Cam. A uh, rules book. So the rules book. Let's take a look at this. Weighs in at uh, 28 pages. And full color. Game components, uh, units inf information, the colors. So Germany actually is like a dark green in this. That's interesting. Uh, German SS are black. Hungary is dark, dark green. I guess that would be like a gray for German. But anywho, uh, how to win, stacking, zones of control, reinforcements, replacements. Soviet conversions, withdrawals, air power, strategic movement, the action phase, movement, combat, advances, artillery, logistics, supply, headquarters and leaners, axis and Soviet miners, and assault guns and tigers. And that's it. So, the Dark Valley East Front Campaign Rule Booklet, Scenario Booklet. So, this is going to weigh in at 20 pages. And then let's see uh, scenarios. Operation Barbarossa. Never heard of that. Maybe somebody can tell me about it. Russ Swordsman! He should be asleep too. Well, I appreciate you stopping in, Ruff. Uh, scenarios Operation Baba Rosa Fall Blau Interesting Operation Zinedel Operation uh, Bagration Bagration Named after a Russian hero in the 18 12 war with Napoleon. Interesting. Designer notes. Several pages of designer notes. And 
a nice full color spreadsheet of example of play several pages long that's excellent read through that probably read through that uh, as soon as we get done with the live stream the abbreviated sync was a play on the back of the dark valley scenario book all right so we have a uh, charts combat results charts bombardment charts depot charts terrain effects charts two-sided and two copies three copies uh, actually this is different on the back this is the activation chit availability interesting and sequence of play and weather effects then we have the East Front campaign replacements conversions withdrawals Soviet replacements and the Soviet conversions guard infantry corps is three infantry divisions guard infantry army is three guards infantry corps interesting okay and we have a deluxe edition dark valley east front campaign special rule reminder turn one turn one to three and additional rules reminder nice counter sheet uh, you can tell these are nice big counters these are not the half inch not sure if it tells us what size the counters are they are not these are thicker counters uh, they're on the uh, G, uh, GMT white counter stock pretty thick actually very happy with that the one sheet there take a look at some of these units here nice looking counters nice looking counters all right and so there is smaller counters these look like the half inch counters as well oh I wonder if you know what I wonder is this Barbarossa de Berlin yeah these are the counters for Barbarossa de Berlin I was gonna say they are bigger counters huh okay oh and here's Barbarossa de Berlin as well okay well now we know the rest of this story as they like to say and uh, admin counters and all kinds of stuff there Barbarossa de Berlin on the thicker GMT um, card stock which is nice now let's look at the Dark Valley see what we have so yeah a little bit interesting color combination on this and I kind of like it actually normally you have uh, Germany is gray these are kind of like a greenish gray I don't know if you guys can really see that well or not but it's kind of a got like a greenish tint to it um, you know a lot of times the gray especially when you use white numbering or black lettering sometimes it doesn't stand out I think this greenish gray actually they might be onto something there because I think that makes the counter number stick out a little bit better stop doing that whatever you're doing hang on I gotta move this stupid thing out of the cord out of the way sorry so you can kind of see it's a gray but it's kind of like it got a greenish tint to it All right, and 
Japan is usually British, but I'm sure it's not British. Soviets are usually red, but there was a color index in one of the books, so this must be like the Soviet um, guards divisions, and then this is like the regular Soviets. These do look like a half inch counters. All right, so let's take a look at ugh, the rest of what's in this box, and it looks like it's mostly maps, two dice, a gray and a red, interesting. And then a little insert. So they put this insert in so that nothing lays on top of the dice and warps. Hmm. I'm not sure why they would do that. I mean, I understand the purpose behind it. It's just game manufacturers would make, I mean, game manufacturers, they wanted to save a few dollars, right? They have to print this, <laughs> they have to print this special insert, right? So they can put the dice in there so nothing lays on top of the dice which costs, I don't know how much this costs, but it costs some money, right? And then they have the two dice in there. Who doesn't have two six-sided dice? They could not produce this at all because I think most people are gonna throw that away and then probably not even use the dice to come with it. Anywho, you know, somebody was talking in our live stream the other day about things that game companies could do to get the price of games down. All right, let's take a look. It's two big mounted maps here. Set this aside for a second. Mm. What do we got here? Look at that. That is a lot. You gotta love mounted maps. That's for sure. Okay, that's one of the greatest things companies are doing, one of the good things companies are doing is the mounted maps. I don't mind paying a little bit more for the game if I can get a mounted map for it. All right, I'm going to scoop my, my uh, thing back a little bit so we can... All right, so this is going to be... Ooh, ooh. Nice. So it's going to be four. Sorry, so it's four sections. I'll try and show you. Ugh. Damn. I was really hoping it was not going to be this big. This is a little big. It's a little big for me. All right. So this is uh, this is one section. So you can see how big that is. And it's basically four of those sections, and then it's too wide. Her map. Now let's take a look at what's on the back. <gasps> look at what's on the back. Look at what's on the back. Look at that. World War II, Barbarossa de Ruin on the back. Hmm, nice. Very nice. Hey Al, how you doing buddy? Wow. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we'll look at that here in a minute. Let's try to stay focused. Alright, so here is the Dark Valley East Front. This is the East Map. There's Moscow there. Uh, Kharkov is way down here. Let's see if I can fold this up a little bit and zoom it up. So you guys can see the bottom half of the map. So this is basically, if I zoom this down just slightly, right here is half of the map. You can see it's a big, nice big map. Thick cardboard stock, Kharkov, Rostov, Stalingrad, And then here is 
here is um, our scenario we're playing in the standard combat series happens right here in this location uh, the 11th Panzer at the Char River so here's Char Station right there but this is the bend of the river as they were trying to go and uh, help at Stalingrad so that's interesting so our our little map is just in that little area there all right so that's map number one so we see what map number two looks like there's no fun in Stalingrad <laughs> uh, well, we'll see uh. All right, so I'm unfolding the other map here. As you can see, it's a little bit of a problem, but we're, we're, we're making do. We're making do. We're making do, my friends. So here's uh, here's Warsaw, so that's Poland here. Germany. And then this is gonna be do is again I'll fold it up and bring the other half up so you guys can take a look at the bottom half of the map the mountains here here's Kiev Odessa this is Romania down here Germany's just up in this location there Warsaw like I said is just right there So I could get this map in if I turned it this way, because I have a longer area. And Berlin is way back over here. So right here is the S, uh, the western edge of the map. That's where Berlin is. Now let's see. Oh, and look. Look at what's on the back of this one. You're not going to believe it. It is blank. Oh, okay. But super cool that we got our World War II Barbarossa to Berlin um, mounted map on the other side of one of these. That I'm sure that cost him a little bit of money. I'm sure that cost him a little bit of money to you know double side print this map here. But uh, especially since you know Barbarossa to Berlin is not like one of the mainstream games. Ah. So yeah, look at that. So I've got that now. I've got the uh, upgraded counters. I've got the cards. I've got the rules. I got everything I need except for space. I could, like I said, I can put this this way probably without a problem. The only problem is right now, over here on this side of my table is the, um, ah, don't want to knock it over either, is my standard combat series, which we got to try and finish up one of these days. So two huge mounted maps. Some counter sheets. What do we have? Th three counter sheets. Just trying to move things around at, at my desk. I just hate. I hate my setup. I really urgh, just hate my setup. I just don't have enough room. Uh, so what do we have? We have uh, one. To three three sheets of counters for Dark Valley. We have one and a half sheets for Barbarossa to Berlin. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five double-sided um, charts, sequence of plays. We have the scenario book, we have the rules booklet, and of course all that comes in a nice sturdy, thick, three-inch box. 
And don't forget the dice and this stupid insert. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. They could just not produce this, right? Just not produce it. Not send out dice so they don't have to worry about it. And they can just put the maps in the bottom. They can put the rules and the play aids in there. They can put the counter sheets right on top. Put the lid on the box. And ship it out. And save themselves a few dollars. Yeah, I'm very happy. Thanks for thanks for the info. I'm really happy that I got my mounted map. I'm surprised they don't have like a little insert of the map, kind of like overlaying on this. But this is uh, you can see the the area of these two maps. So one map is that big. So that's one map, and then this is the other map. Pretty good size. Uh, 22 by 34. Four. So total, it's going to be 44, because it's 22, and 22 is 44 by 34. So it's going to be 44 inches by 34 inches total. Yeah, nice. I think we got a... a yeah, like I said, we don't need the dice because why, 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 why? I'm sure most people are not going to use the dice that come with it. And even if you do, if you don't include dice, people can, they've probably got a million dice anyways. There you go, that is a live unboxing, Deluxe Edition, The Dark Valley, the East Front Campaign. I'm looking forward to um, specifically like Stalingrad scenario, if we can if we can manage that. Uh, or, uh, let's see, was there a Stalingrad scenario? Let's see. Uh, scenario, so... Operation Barbarossa, Fall Blau, Operation Zitadel, and Operation Bagration. So, no specific Stalingrad, but of course Stalingrad is going to be part of all of those, or most of them anyways. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, uh, so here's our... Uh, Currently, what we have, and I don't know if I just take like one of these counters out, one of these army counters. Oop. This is going to be caucuses, so this is going to go. Caucuses, huh? Interesting. They don't have a caucuses now. Oh, yes, they do right there. All right, so that is the old counter and the new counter. So, same size. Um, Thicknesses. See if we can see if we can. Probably not, but we'll see what we can do here. Come on, can you do it? No, it's just nothing to focus in on. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can tell it's slightly thicker. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like way thicker. It's just a little bit thicker. Feels a little bit thicker anyways. When I when I look at it, it's like a little bit over the top of this one. 
but I'm sure they've been all updated with you know with any of the errata or anything like that, which is good too. So, so very very happy. I was happy. Uh, was very happy to get. Uh, well, look more of the little dice in this game. So, yeah, I'd like to do. Uh, I'd like to do a. Um, Barbarossa to Berlin, World War II. The only problem is, like I said, <laughs> oh, good Lord, I could, I would like to, um, see, it's made by Ted Racer, too. So that, maybe that's why they did that. Anyways, um, yeah, I'd like to do a little bit of World War II Barbarossa to Berlin. It is a card-driven game, which is hard to do solitaire. Because you obviously know what the other cards the other player has. But, um... It's one of these games I haven't played in a while, so I'm going to have to reread the rules. I've played this probably three or four times, though, and I loved it every time. But, of course, you never get very far. Because you, you, you plan for... Play with your friend at a game convention or whatever, and you play for three or four hours and you get a couple turns in and then you go, oh, okay, well, let's try something else. And yeah, and then you put it away. So I never made it very far in the game. <laughs> but yeah, excited, excited. So good find, good help on that. Uh, yeah, there is a, just Stuka Joe does have a solitary mode for the card driven games. Um, you know, there, there is that option as well. So you can see what a difference the size is in the box. Ugh, the size of the boxes are. Ugh, come here, you jerk. But these two will go on my shelf right next to one another. And hopefully, hopefully get these out. We, of course, we got uh, Stalingrad 42. And we got another new one we just got in today. Holland 44. So I've got like four good ones that I need to decide what we're doing. What we're, so many things, not enough time. So, uh, and we'll be doing a live stream on Saturday night. Uh, well, Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna talk with Tony, Tony's Board Life, and talk with the, um, and talk with uh, Rough Swordsman, and we're going to get the kind of talk with him and find out all the good information uh, about his playthrough of Peleliu, which he's going to finish today or tomorrow. And just talk to him about his, uh, you know, the games he likes, uh, what systems he likes, and, you know, just kind of introduce him to the wargaming community. Kind of everyone does never gets to see. Uh, you know, they hear your voice, they see your hands a lot of times, but they never actually get to see you and hear from you. So, so we'll get a good chance to talk with him on Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're over in the Blighty, you're over in Blighty? Crikey, that's like 9 o'clock over there, so... Uh, Charles says, looks really nice. I may have enough room, maybe, for the maps, but lately I've been staying away from big games. Just too much for me solo. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is a thing, isn't it? It is a thing. You need the space. You need somewhere to store it. You know, even my, just my little old, you know, one map standard combat series game over there. You can see how much room that takes up, right? So you got this big, huge mammoth game. It's going to take up even that much more space. But yeah, it looks really good. I'm happy I got it. I'm glad I got the info. So big thanks to JG. And I'm butchering his name, and I apologize for that, but... He knows who he is, and he knows I appreciate his his thoughts, his comments. He posted that uh, after I did my unboxing of Barbarossa de Berlin, he said, hey, I didn't know if you know this or not, but Dark Valley, if you get that, 
Um, it comes with the maps and the updated counters. So I was like, hmm. So I knew I wanted to get it. And so I'm happy I got it. It is kind of a monster East Front game. So if you're uh, into East Front, which I like the East Front. It is kind of a monsterish kind of game, but uh, you know, that's that's the way it's designed. Um, you know, if I can get maybe a one map scenario and I can put the map long way, I could, you know, do a scenario, at least a one map scenario. So we'll, we'll look through the rules and check it out, look through the scenarios. I don't know if the scenarios tell whether or not they're one map or two maps or what. But uh, yeah, so anyways, Saturday, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, guys, if you're not on our TAC Up Wargaming, TAC Up Wargaming Facebook group, uh, be sure to stop in and uh, subscribe. We uh, link everyone's videos and post questions and comments. And, you know, if you have need help, like uh, we had a fellow that joined yesterday and was looking for somebody to play Vassal with them. And we, one of my other subscribers joined up with them. So super cool there. So if you're looking to play something on Vassal, you're just looking for, you know, people to play with, talk, come on over to Tack Up Wargaming on Facebook. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. I need a bigger table. This is, it's just killing me. It's just killing me because I know I've mentioned this a few times, but uh, hey, Viper Dave, when I lived in Ohio, I had a 20 by 18 foot room all to myself with three tables. I had so much space and I moved down here and now I got no space whatsoever. I mean, literally my little three, two and a half by three, well, I would say four by, what's this? Two and a half feet is about... It's about all I have, so. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. I appreciate you guys staying up. I know uh, Rough Swordsman stayed up, and Jay Jeed stayed up. And, uh, yeah, really good find. We got a couple more live unboxings. Holland 44, Stalingrad 42. And looking forward to checking these out. So we'll see you all next time. Thanks for coming out. Have a good night.